The Notary's Unsealed podcast is brought to you by the Notary Success System and Captivated Notary Marketing Solutions. Coming up on this episode. I've had companies reach out to me. They say, hey, we basically hired you based off your reviews. So what's going to make me buy from you rather than them? And then you and you have to come with a reason and give them. Now you got to compete in order to get that sale. My, my, my issue is, if it's vegan, don't sit there and say it's a cheesesteak. Real smooth this time. We know the reach unsealed. Uh huh. This my everyday life. Yeah. We know the reach unsealed. Ooh. Every day I hustle out here living it right. Let's go. We know the reach unsealed. Put the stamp down and stop uh. in front of the mic. Here we go. Took the game over. We yeah. home now. We soldiers. Griff, Matherin, and Q, the podcast. You can't hold us. Y'all heard the word. Uh. Y'all heard the word. What's going on, that. everybody out there in the notary world? This is Quentin Smith. I'm the host of Notaries Unsealed, and we've got two co-hosts here, Mr. Griffin. Griffin, say what's up to the people. What's going on, party people? This your man, Griff, all the way live from your success system. And we also got my man, Ismail Matherin. Matherin, say what's going on to the people. Hey, what's going on, folks? You guys are doing well and ready for a nice show. All right. And what we're here to do today is bring you our brand new podcast called Notaries Unsealed. And with that, first, we're going to talk about us being notaries in general, right? That's not what the whole podcast is about, but this is episode number one. So we want to get this out of the way. So to kick things off, we're going to go back to Griff. And Griff, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your notary business? All right. Well, this is Griff. Everybody know me as Seben Griffin, Uncle Griff for Griffin Notary Services out here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Also, the Notary Success System the number one face-to-face loan closing training system in the notary industry, hands down, the original, period. And all I'm here to do is to make sure that you know what you're going to do when you're at that closing table. Back to you, Q. Yeah, that sounds good. And the notary success system, right? How, how's, how are things going with that for you right now? Oh, man, things are going great. The people are coming in from as far away as Ohio. I got people coming in from Tennessee, from New Jersey, locally, and they're having an opportunity to come in and get the proper training on how to do a loan closing without all of the other fluff that comes with other trainings. Now, there's nothing wrong with that other fluff, but for some people, that's a little too distracting from the, for them and they need help actually seeing the documents and going through the whole loan closing process from beginning to end and getting challenged on how to do the venue, how to fill out the notary acknowledgements, what they need to be paying attention to for us, what the signers need to check boxes and things of that nature. And it's helping them and preparing them. And then this is the kicker. Once they finish the training, when they get that first assignment or their next assignment, I do a full document review with them so that they can make sure that they haven't forgotten what they learned with me. That's awesome, man. That's, you know, what, what, what you've got going on in Virginia and to all the notaries that can get to you where you are. Um, it, it is definitely a, a great service that you're offering to the notary community. So if, uh, if you're hearing us right now and you happen to be in the Virginia Beach area or if you can get down there, definitely check my man Griff out. Um, it's, it's, it's worthwhile and you can get some hands on one on one. Listen, I've sat into some of the, uh, the stuff that he's done for the members that he has on YouTube and you know, the, the type of instruction that you're getting from Griff is, is something that I, I wish that would have been available at the time when I got started, but now I got Griff here. So <laughs> if I ever need any help, I can just reach out to him. So Griff, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for, for doing this, this podcast. Uh, my pleasure, man. And just and everybody, notarysuccesssystem.com. I forgot to mention that earlier. Notarysuccesssystem.com. Back to you, Q. Oh, yeah. We're going to hear more about the Notary Success System. But, yeah, www.notarysuccesssystem. Everybody, make sure you check that out. All right. So now we're going to keep it moving and get over to my man, Ismail Matherin. Matherin, you're up in Massachusetts, right? Yes. Massachusetts. Yes. yes I am here. I am here in Taxachusetts where we get tax on everything. Here. Oh, I hear that. Oh, man. Look, my name is Ismail Madrin. I'm the owner of Madrin Notary Services. So we've been offering services here in the Bristol County and surrounding area since 2017. 
We are fully mobile. Um, we offer multiple services such as fingerprinting. Uh, we do um, do loan signing, which is very popular nowadays in the Nordic world. Um, field inspection, we just became a constable. So we are providing constable services here in Bristol County. And so far, everything is, is well. So one of the things that has contributed to my success here in the notary business here is having a fully mobile operated business. So for those of you who follow me at Matherin Notary on Instagram or follow on YouTube, Matherin Notary Services, you will see that I posted multiple videos of my mobile setup. And I'm always willing to, you know, help each um, help another person out if you need any um, advice. I do not give any legal advice, but if you... If you're looking to see how I start my mobile setup, I can always direct you in the right place. But beside that, we are doing well, and I pre I can't wait to share some experiences with you all. Yo, Mathen, that mobile setup that you got, what kind of wood did you use on that, man? Is that cherry wood? Like, that that wood setup is crazy. If you guys have not <laughs> subscribed to Mathen on Instagram or checked him out on Facebook, he shows this thing off all the time. Like, it's, it's a humble flex, though, because you know how you're doing business. But that wood, that wood is a, is, a, is a real humble flex on him, man. What kind of wood is that? Man, look, I have no idea. Just like I tell everybody else, that be reaching out to me. Hey, how do I get my car like this? I'm like, reach out to my wife. You know, that's who had the car custom made. You know, everything. Shout out to wifey. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. So I don't know what type of wood it is. The table comes comes out all the way out if, if I have multiple clients. So, we, you know. Yeah, I used to have a chair, but somebody stole it during an appointment. But it is what it is. <laughs> My man lives by his slogan, bringing the office to you with the nice wood. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's nice. Right, right. Uh, um, and me, myself, my name is Quentin Smith. I run Q the Notary LLC. We're based right outside of Philadelphia, out in Chester County, Pennsylvania. Um, I've been a notary the shortest out of everybody here. I've been a notary since November of 2021. This is not my first foray into business, though, or understanding the way that things are done. Um, so um, that's that. That's my notary business. And on top of the notary business, I think the more interesting thing, even though like the notary business is kind of cool and everything, not kind of, it is cool. Um, I, I'm also the captivated notary on Instagram and uh, YouTube. Um, and I run Captivated Notary Marketing Solutions, uh, where we do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, service for notaries that are looking to have their uh, communities captivated. You know, that's one of our, that's, that's actually our, our, our pillar statement, is to connect notaries to their community. Um, and, you know, with our services, we work one-on-one -on -one, uh, with a consultation to start. Um, and within that consultation, uh, that's probably the most important thing that I, that I offer, um, especially when it comes to building uh, your digital presence online, um, tons of free information that I give on there, which, you know, if you check me out on YouTube, same stuff is there too. All the information is free. You just got to do the work. Um, but Captivated Notary Marketing Solutions is my baby. That's what, what I love to do outside of being a notary because I do love being a notary. I didn't do this uh, just to make $10,000 a month um, because that's not really... Anyway, we're not going to get into that on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, outside of the Captivated Notary Marketing Solutions, I also run the Captivated Store, um, where you can also get additional marketing um, materials. But you know what? It's not really materials. It's more apparel, right? It's notary lifestyle apparel. Um, the coolest so apparel out, out there, man. It is the coolest it's, apparel. It Thank is. You. It's I, the coolest one out that. there, man. Yeah, it is. I appreciate that. Like, I, I see other shirts, and you know what? I'm just going to be honest. Like, some things that I see out there, I'll just be like, ah, that font's off, or ah, <laughs> they didn't size that right. Yeah, but not only that, you also have something for the, the entire family, so that's what right. makes it special. You have stuff for the yep. kids. I'm pretty sure at some point you're going to have some stuff for pets as well, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, my kids have been asking me to, to make to make something for the dog. You know, we'll see. I, I don't well. know. Might as well. If y'all ask for it, <laughs> if somebody asked me to do something custom, I'll definitely do that. 
But um, so that's what I'm bringing to the notary community. We're doing a lot of business. Uh, all three of us have have tried our best to help notaries as uh, along in their journeys as we go along in ours. You know, Griff with his YouTube channel and Notary Success System. Matherin had has Matherin's Business Insight, um, which he's brought a lot of attention to a lot of notaries out there that are doing some really good things across the country. And you know, with Captivated, we're out here just trying to make sure that notaries have uh, rep, uh, polished marketing material because there's no reason for notaries not to have um, high quality marketing materials for themselves. Um, now with that in marketing and everything else, um, you know, when you're out there marketing your business, uh, you know, you, you're doing a couple different things. You know, one, you're letting the general public know that your business exists. And two, uh, you're letting other notaries know that your business exists as well, right? Because as soon as somebody comes up uh, on the block, you know, that, that those are um, notaries that you are um, sharing customers with, you're, you're sharing a customer base with, right? And that's what people invest in marketing for. Um, this is a competitive business, so to say, if you're living in an area that has, you know, multiple notaries, you're all trying to compete for um, people's attention, which is a really good thing when you have multiple notaries in an area, um, because what it does is it allows the, the general public to be informed more frequently about the services that are being offered, right? And, and what ends up happening or what should end up happening is we start to get some healthy competition. And that's really what we want to talk about today. And today's uh, podcast name is Everybody Loves Everybody. Mm -hmm. um, because ultimately, you know, we're, we're in this industry together. Yes. Um, but we're still independent business owners. And if somebody else is making the money, that means that you're not making any money. Right. So this is this is what fuels competition. So, Griff, can you give us a little bit about your, your thoughts on healthy competition? Well, um, with the healthy competition, the healthy competition, what makes it healthy is when you respect other people's businesses, you have respect for your own business and just the whole concept of business in general. Because when people understand business, they'll know that, OK, here's what I can offer. Somebody else is offering something a little bit different than mine. And if I'm not in a position to offer, offer that service or that item or at that time, they're going to outdo me. That's just a part of it. So the person who can pay LeBron James the money he wants is going to get him on their team. Same thing with Kevin Durant or anybody else. So that's healthy competition. So the biggest problem is that everybody, and as we call it, everybody loves everybody, Meaning they're trying to stop the competition. And sometimes people don't want, they don't want the public competition or even the thought of competition because they don't like to compete themselves. And I've come across a lot of people who really don't like to compete. They just want to do business, you know, and then when they have somebody who comes in, who's just a little bit aggressive, who's a little bit high or a little more focused. And it's really, you're more focused on, establishing yourself they're like ho 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 we're all in this together you know we don't have to compete against each other you sort of do because the consumers want to know why should i pick you instead of that person that person has the same is doing somewhat similar the same thing so why would i pick them over you or vice versa and you have to now convince them what you can give to them over the next person. And that's, I mean, I think Q used to do car sales, right? You say you was a car yep. seller. So yep. you got a, a, a 2023 Ford Mustang. The same price, the same price on your lot as it is on the other guy's lot. So what's going to make me buy from you rather than them? And then you, and you have to come with a reason and give them, now you got to compete in order to get that sale. Well, and here's the thing. You, you automatically start competing as soon as you set out prices for yourself. True. I, I, as soon as you make prices, you've already started the competition. Correct. Right. Because then people looking at it is like, oh, well, you, you know, because they'll say, well, no, nah, you're charging too high or you're charging too low or whatever the case may be. So now your competitors are like, 
okay, well, if you're charging that much, what am I, what are they getting for that price? So let's just say, you know, power of attorney services or loan closing services and you charge, you know, 275. Well, what in the world are he, is he giving them that the other person's not getting? And the consumer, going back to the consumer, first thing this day, the consumer is going to ask you is, what am I getting for my 275? Well, not only do you get me to do your loan closing, but I also drop the docs off. I'll also scan back and have a digital copy for you that can be emailed to you or uploaded into a secure location. Wow, the other person was charging way less, but you know what? I like the convenience of having that document scanned. I like the fact that you go drop it off for me. Okay, that's worth two seventy five. So now you can now the other person has to decide: Are they in a position to step their game up to that level? And if they are, okay, cool. But if not, then they're not going to hit that that demographic of people who want that type of convenience given to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that, especially being able to provide the additional services as you um, as you just mentioned, because a lot of people, a lot of new notaries um, within the industry, they are not willing to do any scan bags. They're not willing to go know make that extra effort to drop it off at fedex or ups or wh wherever is necessary like I i've dropped off document at the the u.s postal service because that's what uh, you know the company who hired me that's what they wanted i feel like you know being able to be different in a way and being able to be flexible that is another way that you know creates it creates a healthy competition but at the end of the day you know, I feel like if people know exactly the type of services they are trying to provide or the type of demographic they are targeting, that right there will also going to help their company. And also, I'll, I'll always do your research. Um, I always do my research in my area. The past couple of months, I've noticed I've had three new notary businesses within the area. So if you want to be, if you want to compete with others, you have to know what's going on around you. You have to know what these other notaries are doing. What service are, are, are they providing? Um, I've had three new notary services all on Google, and I've watched them. They are getting reviews, and I'm seeing exactly what folks are saying about their they company and what they are doing. So you have to be willing to do your research. We always talk about that. Do your market research. See what's out there and making sure that you are pricing your services correctly. As Griff mentioned, you know, if you, some people might, at the example that Griff gave was the 275 and what comes with it versus someone that's charging, let's say 125 and they don't want to scan it back. They don't want to drop it off for you. And they don't even want to double check to see if your ID matches. <laughs> so, you know, so you have to yeah, find. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So you have to find exactly what it is that you are good at and just focus on that. So my take is. Listen, nobody started this business and said, I want to be a mediocre business. No, Do, correct. You, know, I agree. You, 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 you didn't wake up and say, I'm going to start this business and I'm going to be the best mediocre notary business that's <laughs> in my area. Right. So if, if you want to be the best notary business in your area, then yes, you're in a competition because there are other notaries in your area. Yes, there's money out there for everybody to get. But if you're not striving out there to get the bulk of the money, then you're not doing enough and you don't love your business enough. You're right. And see, one of the things that Bill Soroka said, and I've quoted this many, many times, because people would ask him, and this is prior to the pandemic. They said, Bill, is the market oversaturated with notaries? And he said over and over again, the market is oversaturated with mediocre notaries. If you're going to be a mediocre notary, the market is oversaturated for you. But for top notch quality notaries that'll be there for the end user, that loan, that lender, that title, escrow settlement and the signing company, that's a rarity. So when we when you look into those Facebook groups and you see all the errors that these people are talking about that they're making and they need help with this, that and the other. If you can find a way to be the best notary in your area, it's not oversaturated in that arena it's not there's no way it can be it's because human nature 
you got notaries who are in this business that are just doing it as a pass through until something that they believe is better comes along. Somebody said they can make some money. They came in and did it. And then they get upset because they come across somebody like me who's competing hard because I'm using this notary business to take care of my whole family, not just part, but my whole family. So I'm going to go out here and compete. I'm going to go out here and do the low orders, do the high orders, do all the orders that I absolutely can take. If they say scan back, I will scan back. That's why I started doing stuff mobile. That's why I bought another scanner, all of that. So I can compete and be the one that those other companies say we want him because I know there are people out here who will not push themselves to the limit of what they really can accomplish because it'll take them out of their comfort zone of sitting around chilling all day and they don't want that. Yeah, I think that's what the issue is. I think people, you know, they don't want to do work. And this is something that I see on the marketing side. You know, I, I get notaries that want me to do all the work for them, you know, and I'm not, that, that's, that's, that's not putting anybody out there, you know, specifically, but this is something that happens. You know, they think that, um, you know, by hiring somebody to do all the work for them, that that should be enough, but it's not. It's not enough. You have to go out there and want this for yourself. You have to go out there and want to be a better business. You know, you have to go out there and and want to do a great job and not just a great job, an amazing job, because you're if you're in this for the long haul. Right. If you didn't just start this for a pass through income. Um, you have to start thinking about long term success. And that starts by building up your name by providing a reputable service. That yeah. is correct. Go for it, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. That, that right there is true. And another way that you can, um, as far as be very competitive with tenure market, you have to you have to take the time out. I know we briefly talk about it during the research, but you have to find out exactly what. Is that older and older business doing better, um, better than you, or what they are doing worse? Um, so if you find out, okay, they are getting to the appointment on time, or they are they are providing, you know, the document drop off, and if you're not doing it, maybe that's something you should consider that you're going to add to your um, notary service. And at the same time, you also want to find out what what are they doing that's the same, the same stuff that you are doing. And find a way that you can set yourself apart. One of the simplest ways that I've done for the acknowledgement um, certificate here in Massachusetts, mm-hmm. um, most notaries they will put a stamp right on there. Fine. What I've done, I've ordered a golden seal on Amazon. I put the seal in, and I use the embosser, and I stamp it. That right there just set me apart from any other notaries. And every time I do that. The customers, it's like it's like wow, oh, this is nice. Even though the stamp itself make it official, but just adding that something extra like a golden seal to them, it's like that means everything. It looks more official, looks more um, pro- more professional to them. So you have to find out what the other notaries or other businesses in your area are doing that you can either um, uh, make an improvement or you can find a way to do it better than them. So. I partly agree with that. One of the things that I would say is, you know, knowing what other notaries are doing, that's cool, but set a standard for for yourself from the beginning. What exactly is my standard of excellence? Write yourself a mission statement and then live up to that. So at that point, it really doesn't matter what they do because you've already decided that this is what my business is going to stand for. This is the level of excellence that my business is going to stand for. So that's what I'm going to pursue. What they're doing, that's cool. But if their level of excellence is not the same as mine, then I'm going to blow them out the water regardless. Absolutely. Yep. Especially um, the reviews. The review will tell you a lot about a company. And I've seen good reviews. I've seen excellent reviews. And I've seen horrible reviews. Like a review... And that's another way that you can set yourself apart. If you able to get great reviews from your client based on the experience, like don't just ask for a review. Ask them, hey, what what did you like about the appointment? You're like make them highlight what they like, whether it's you showing up on time, whether it's you being able to provide them the drop off document, whether it's you even taking two minutes to review the document. Anything that they put in that review represents represents your company. 
And I've had people, I've had companies reach out to me. They say, hey, we basically hired you based off your reviews. Like we've never seen an order with this many reviews in your area. So we reached out to you based on what past customers or have said on your review. So find, mm -hmm. find ways that you can stand out. Yeah, you have to protect your brand and, and, and reviews is one of the uh, of the things that can hurt your brand. So when you're out there and you're working, you're out in the field and you're, you're running into appointments, whether it's loan signing or general notary work, whatever, protect your brand at all points. Never, never come out yourself. You know, make sure that you're handling your brand the way that you want your brand to be perceived by the public. And not only just when you're out and out, out and about in the streets, but also when you're in these notary streets <laughs> and the way that you <laughs> portray yourself. Yeah um on the internet because you know not everybody is i promise i promise that i wasn't gonna curse on this <laughs> not everybody is with the crap okay <laughs> you know um yeah. not everybody's with it and, and so you have to think about the fact that though you and your friends and your notary friends might be okay with this type of talk between y'all you've got customers that you know, they're going to find you on Google My Business, right? Right. And then usually what ends up happening is they find you on Google My Business and they give you a call. And then it's afterwards that they go and research you after they find you, right? Because usually when right. they're calling, they, they want to talk to somebody right then at that point. And they, and they call, you answer, you set the appointment. And it's afterwards that they go and say, who did I just hire? All right. And this is what I've been told from my customers and from other notaries about their experiences. You know, this is what happens. So if they go back and they, they pull up your uh, your your Instagram or they go search you out, you know, cue the notary and then cue the notaries out here, you know, talking crazy with, with, with guns out and everything out like that. Mm -hmm. I may lose a customer. I may lose a lot of customers. That's correct. You yeah, know, because, just because yeah. they don't feel safe. Right. You want them to feel safe. You um, because here, here's one of the other things also. A lot of what I call true business persons, male or female, they like somebody who competes. Now, of course, if you're the per if they recognize that, OK, you might be the type of person that really is not a competitor. You know that you just here, you do the business, you make your money, you go home if they told you, I mean, like the story I gave one time, I said, if some, I think on the Frit or Friday, if somebody came to you and said, okay, fellas, which one of y'all are ready to, um, I need somebody to go drive a hundred miles one way to take care of this notary stuff. More than likely, most notaries will be like, well, oh, how much you paying me? The first question you should be saying is, okay, what type of document do you have? What's your time frame? I can travel a hundred miles, but when do you want me, uh, you know, what time do you want me to get there? And they're like, oh, okay. You know, so now you're not, don't worry about the pay because you got to have in your mind, anybody who's willing to coming up to me, asking me to go a hundred miles, they're going to have to pay. That's established. What you need to know. I need to know what kind of document, when you need this done, when you need me to have this back to you by now that's telling them, okay, you're ready to go. The other people are more concerned about how inconvenient this is for them. No, I'm going to do it. Now, here's one way I separate myself from, from most notaries. I know, based off of what they say in these notary streets, a lot of notaries want to get in and get out in 15.5 milliseconds. <laughs> okay? So when I go to... <laughs> yeah, I know that's quick. <laughs> when I go to signers' houses, I'm and I've, I'm evaluating. I did a video about this called Read the Room. I'm evaluating what's going on there and I'm like, oh, okay, you're cooking dinner. So I sit there and they say, I said, no, 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 go ahead on and finish cooking your dinner. Because what you don't want is the person stressed out while they're signing papers or if they're trying to finish up some homeschooling with the kid or, you know, they say, look, my husband got to go pick up the kids from, um, from the school. No problem, sir. You go ahead on. We'll get started with your wife and you let them know this is your home. I'm not here to disrupt your flow. I'm going to be there for you. So go ahead on, take your time. Now, in my mind, yes, I'm like, okay, man, this is going to add another 15, 20 minutes. But if I can have them in a calm and relaxed state when they sit down with me, that's that's something that a lot of notaries don't do. A lot of notaries will say, wait a minute, what do you mean you got to go pick your kids up? You should have took care of that before I got here. 
Well, I don't have time. I can't be waiting for you to be doing that. Okay, well, look, okay, we're just going to have to reschedule. I'm out. Bye. I don't do that. If you if you got stuff going on, no problem. Like one time, a customer, we were supposed to meet at the house. Some things got mixed up, and they was like, look, we got to have our kid at this place by 5 o'clock. I said, where's the place? I'll just meet you there. I met them at the karate studio. That's what I did. I met them at the karate studio, and they <clears throat> and they was happy. You know, I had to do it one the other day. Supposed to have been at the lady's house. I ended up meeting her. Had to go with her because she needed credible witnesses. So we found two credible witnesses, and then I had to meet her and the credible witnesses at the YMCA instead of her house. And she and everybody was all happy because I took the time out to accommodate them. When you can accommodate the persons that you're across from. That sets you apart from probably 98% of the notaries out here because most notaries, especially that's been in a business less than three years, they don't even understand the concept of accommodating the person that they're working with and that person's own home. What you got, Q? No, you're absolutely right. Um, And really to to put it uh, as plain and simple as this, healthy competition is good. You know, if you're out here thinking that you're not going to compete and that you're just going to kind of flounder along um, and and that's good enough, you know, if, if that's what you want to do for your business, great, fine, you know. Um, but for somebody that's doing this full time that is supporting their entire family based off of this business, you have to wake up every day and compete, you know. And, and if, if somebody's going to tell you, no, 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 don't compete, you know, link up with everybody else and, you know, build this this huge notary network, you know, that's great for somebody that is trying to get a lot of notaries in one place. Um, but if you're out there trying to get customers, you have to compete. You know, if you see, if you're making $30,000 a year and a notary that is five miles down the road from you is making $70,000 a year, they're doing something that you're not doing and you're not doing, uh, uh enough business to compete. And, and, and if you don't want to compete and you're, you're perfectly fine with that, then go ahead and let that person, that person make $70,000 when you see him at, at the grocery store, say, Hey, Mr. $7,000, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? I'm over here with $30,000. Yeah. You enjoy your, you, you enjoy your brand cereal. I'm gonna get the off brand. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. No, you're <laughs> and, right. And, and, and you're going to be perfectly fine with that. Like nobody, nobody is, is sharing the, the profits of their notary business with other notaries because this is an everybody loves everybody type of world and we're all just friends and this is all a good thing. No, 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 no. That's not the way that real, the real world works. This, that's not the way that business works. Um, this, we, we live in a capitalist society and I love capitalism because it gives you the opportunity to go out there and compete and, and improve yourself and, and make what's yours. Get everything that's yours. You know, and that's, that's one of my thing. I don't want nobody else's money. I want everything that I worked hard for. I want that back. Everything yeah. that I earned myself. Yeah. No, you're right. Now, well, case in point, a good example of, of competition are lawyers. There are lawyers who go to school together, but they're on opposite sides of the court case. Yeah. Right. But you see on Law and Order, what? They end up having meetings with each other, going out fishing with each other, golfing, drinking, all of that. But when they hit in that courtroom, I'm trying to do the best I can to get my customer off. Well, I'm doing the best I can to put them in jail. Yep. And they respect yep. the fact that Fred is on that side. I'm on this side. But once the courtroom is over, then we can kick it with each other. How you doing this, that, and the other? Iron sharpens iron, this, that, and the other. But sometimes with certain businesses, and sometimes even with the notary business, because that person isn't willing to compete, they're, they don't want other people to compete. And they try to get you to stop being who you are or make you feel that it's bad. And there comes a time to have gatherings and being with each other. But you have to know that, hey, I got to go out here and compete, you know, and it shouldn't be a problem because a lot of the stuff is like most of us, like the three of us, we're in three different cities. So I should never be doing anything to try to squash you from competing in your city, I should be like, okay, well, here's how I can help you to compete, you know, and get out here and get the most um, for you. You get what I'm saying? And that's that's where it all resides at. So I had to learn personally. I had to learn to compete. I had to learn to just go out here, do what I needed to do because I love helping people. But I said, you know what? 
when I compete and can prove to myself that I can hang with the big people out here, then I can help somebody else. Trying to help everybody come alongside with me when they're not willing to. Mm -mm. And here's the other thing, and I throw it back to you. When you compete, if you have children, you're being an example to your kids and your other family members and even to your community to show them how you can compete, but also respect other businesses and other people. The problem is that some people, the only way they know how to compete is by tearing down other people's businesses, stealing other people's business ideas, stealing their customers, and they consider that competition. But if you went head to head with them, without all of the trickery, without all of the foolishness, they couldn't compete. And we see that in certain sports arenas and all of that. People do all these antics and stuff. But if you say, okay, let's box, or they can't box for, for nothing, but they can do all of this here showboating and stuff, antics and making fun and all of that. Like Muhammad Ali, he talked a lot of smack, but he backed it up. Yeah, sure. Back to y'all. Sure did. Nah, that's, I think, <laughs> nah, that that right there makes sense, Griff. You know, that right there makes sense because, you know, we all see, you know, just like Griff is saying, there's nothing wrong with the networking idea. But when it's time for you to make that, when it's time for you to put your business on top of everybody else because you have a family that's depending on it, especially if you're supporting your family with the business, a lot of folks are doing it as a side hustler. A lot of people got into it during the pandemic. But if your business is the primary income, I'm sorry. Look, you have to do whatever is necessary. Of course, it has to be legal. We, we, we're not talking about going out there, being a notary that's robbing folks. But <laughs> you have to do, you know, whatever is necessary for you to, for you to, um, for you to, you know, make your financial goals that you're trying to accomplish. So... It's it's as far as being competitive, I think it's a great idea. And it also based on what you what the person might think being competitive is. You know, a lot of folks feels like okay, if I'm being competitive it has to be oh me tearing down another person. Not really. You know, just like Griff said, we're in different cities, different state. Um, even if there were even if we all was in the same state, we can still find ways to be competitive with one another and still you know, still spend time on the weekend, just kick it, you know, because we all, we are targeting a different, that de- we targeting a different demographic because Q might live somewhere where the, the average income is like $85,000 per household. And I might live in the area where the average income is 40 and Griff might live in the area where the average income is 125. So we have demogra- different demographic that we are targeting. So even if we, this is how we can be able to compete with one another and without having to destroy, you know, each other's businesses, stealing ideas, you know, not giving credit to one another. So I feel like, you know, it's it's a great, it's definitely great to have that within the business. No, you're absolutely right. And, you know, one of the things that we're seeing right now is competition. Competition is healthy. Um, competition for other for competition with other notaries within your area for customers is healthy and I'm, we're going to move on to the next topic but i really want to say this you know when you are competing with another notary in your area um for customers what it does is it educates your community that the service is available right True. and 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 that's where a healthy competition becomes a good thing for everyone within the notary community whether it's ron You know, whether you're in Georgia, Virginia, California, doesn't matter where you are. The more notaries that are out there that are competing with each other for customers, the more our services are, 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 um, spread out to the community, um, and the more aware that they become that we exist. And right now, that's something that we're battling. A lot of people don't know that the traveling mobile notary thing is a thing. Right. You know, how many times have you gone to an appointment and they say, oh, I didn't even know that a mobile notary existed. Yep. Plenty right. Of times. Right. So 
having a healthy competition within um, this notary business is much needed. Do not shy away from it. Um, you know, you got some people out there that'll tell you that you don't need to do that. No, if you need, if you see advertising, if a notary is advertising, you need to be advertising too because, you know, it, it, more people will be educated about what we do when it's two, coming from two people, three people, four people, five people, than you right. by yourself. So if, and ultimately that's going to help everybody make money. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. You're right. No, I, right. I love that, man. Excellent. So what's the next topic? Actually, Griff, what we're going to do right now is take a quick break and hear from our sponsors. So we'll be right back, guys. The Notary Success System is the notary industry leading face-to-face -face loan closing training on the market. You are actually conducting a mock loan closing with a full set of loan closing documents. At the end of the training, you will have the confidence to conduct any loan closing you are assigned. Go to notarysuccesssystem.com and choose your date and time. Peace. Do you need a little help advertising your notary business? Captivated Notary Marketing Solutions helps you better build your business locally. It's the only service we offer. Created by founder Quentin Smith to assist other notaries be successful. We offer affordable solutions like unique custom logos, premium digital ads, and multiple options to help you build your social media presence. Visit us online at www.captivatednotaryms.com. Subscribe today and get captivated. Back to Notaries Unsealed. I hope you guys enjoyed our last segment talking about healthy competition within the notary business because it definitely is a good thing for competitors to be advertising in the communities because the more competition that we have with advertising, the more knowledge that the general public gets about our services that we offer. So now coming back from this break, you know, we want to we, we don't want to make everything all about the notary business because that's not what this podcast is for. You know, uh, one of the things that we want to bring with Notary Unsealed is to give you guys a glimpse into what Matherin and Griffin and I, uh, we usually talk about on a daily basis because, you know, I know that we say this on YouTube when you guys hear us, but we really are friends. We do talk on a daily basis, sometimes two, three, four times a day. Uh, we bounce ideas off of each other. Um, you know, we talk about each other's family things. You know, we, we, we have a nice a uh, tight network between the three of us um, that has been uh, such a, a blessing to, to find in this business. And, and I know that, you know, a lot of people out there are, are looking for networking and, and, and trying to find a lot of people um, to network with. Um, so when you find, you know, a, a good core group uh, of people definitely hold on to them and see what you guys can come up with together. I mean, that's how the notary unsealed. Uh, podcast came about, you know, I think uh, from Griff having us on the uh, YouTube channel um, and us kind of fostering that relationships uh, that we that we've built with each other. Um, you know, we've been able to come up with some great things to help each other out. Um, but when we're not talking about our notary businesses, you know, everybody lives a personal life, right? So we have private lives, we have personal lives, then we have our public lives, and then our business lives, right? So when we're stepping away from our business life, or we need to step away from our business life, like, so Matherin, if you could, can you tell me like, you know, what are some things that you do? Or when do you know that it's time for you to kind of decompress from being, you know, 120% grind, you know, grinding, you know, pedal to the metal on your business? Like, when do you know that it's time for that to happen? And what is it? What, what do you do? Um, I think I, one of the signs for me is when my wife had to have to repeat herself multiple times and try to remind me of something I was supposed to do. And, you know, because we get so caught up within the business, you know, trying to do our absolute best, you know, marketing our business, you know, going out to appointments, um, you know, making sure that we are doing our part as business owners. But when I feel like, you know, the time comes where my focus has been 110% slowly just on business 
and where I'm starting to slack off, you know, with, with family time, what I do, I usually I'll shut it down. You know, if I used to close at 8 p.m., I'll close early. I'll block off my calendar so people are not automatically, you know, scheduling an, an appointment. And I just take some time, you know, just be out, be with the kids. We can watch a movie. We can go out for a hike. The kids love going hiking. Or if it's uh, me and my son, we go to the gun range, you know, just let off some rounds, have some fun, um, you know. But that is, you know, that's pretty much it. And another thing that I like reading, I love reading. So, you know, it might sound boring to some people, but that's that's another way where I de-stress. You know, after I spend time with family, like I, you know, either I'll pick up a book. I have multiple books that I like to read. And I just find a way to just decompose and just get my mindset right. Because one thing is you cannot be as creative when you are stressing. You know, that stress and creativity, they don't go together. So, you, so you'll actually end up doing the opposite. So I feel like, you know, taking that time out for yourself and for your family is very important. And even if you don't have a family per se, but taking the time out for you, even if you just go out, you know, go have a drink or go meet with some friends, you know, you need that time because it's extremely important because that's what's going to help you uh, like advance in your business. If your personal life is a mess, guess what? Your business is going to be a mess. There's no way your business can be this perfect, you know, running fully operated business and your personal life is a mess. So you have to be willing to find a way to balance it out. So let's go back and talk about you like to go to the range with your son. Now, how old is your son? Oh, my son is 10. He'll be 11 in a couple of weeks. Nice. When did you get him started shooting? Started shooting, I want to say maybe about three years ago. So around around 78. Like with my son, my son, um, I started taking him shooting with me when he was eight. Uh, he'll be 11 this year. He actually has his own little 22, um, little 22 pistol. He has a, a 22 pistol and a 22 rifle. Um, so that's yeah. what I taught him on. Um, yep, same here. <laughs> yeah, and I, I and a lot of times, you know, they they say go out and get like the the little American Heritage or or the little Wrangler, you know, the little mm -hmm. Wrangler twenty two. It looks like one of them old Western guns, but I yep. couldn't do it, man. I didn't, I didn't particularly. They're they're too big. So like, if you're trying to get a child to um to if you if you're responsible and you and you teach your children uh proper gun safety and etiquette from a young age, and you want to get them a pistol, you know, one of the things that you have to look at is the size of that pistol. So I got my my son, it's one of the cheapest guns out there that you can possibly buy. It's, it's a little Phoenix Arms uh, P, uh, P22A, P um, it's a little thing, right? But it was perfect for his hands and it didn't have a whole lot of kickback. And it's actually one of the safest guns out there. Um, it's got uh, an, an, It's got two safeties on it. That that stops the and one of them stops the hammer from hitting, um, from hitting the round, right? And in order for you to drop that, you have to take another safety off, right? So it's an extremely safe pistol form. But that was one of the things that I decided, you know, uh, that I I wanted to share with my kid. And I'm glad that you do that. And I encourage everybody, you know, don't be afraid. If go out and get trained, learn proper gun safety, and then. Once you feel comfortable, teach your children as well. Exactly. You know, and, it, exactly. and a lot of people, like when I first did that, I, I got some kickback and they were like, oh, your kids are too young. But what ends up happening is if you don't teach them, if you don't show them, if you don't give them the opportunity to, to be around the guns or something like that, you're going to create a curiosity of them wanting to go out there and look at it when you're not there. Right. So it's better to introduce them and, and to kill that allure of, oh, my goodness, this is something I shouldn't be touching where you teach them about it. And then they know, yeah, I shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, you you are absolutely right. So I actually had him trained with the Wrangler. So I have the 22. Oh, Wrangler. yeah, the Wrangler. Loved, uh, yeah, yeah. He loved that, you know, and I feel like, you know, based off a safety standpoint, it's extremely important to teach him about safety. Now, when when if I'm here, if I'm, you know, if I'm cleaning my stuff, if I'm cleaning my guns, 
he'll tell his sister, hey, you know what? These are the rules. It's like he has like the five rules that he's telling her, you know, all because he was exposed to it. Because when I was younger, I was not exposed to it. My parents are against gun. They still against gun until today. And they they look at me like I'm crazy when <laughs> when they see me, you know, with my gun or they see my son going to the ranch with me. Which is, you know, I, you know, I completely understand is their perspective that, you know, they grew up in a different era where maybe they feel like they didn't need one. But, you know, as things are changing and there's nothing wrong with self-defense, there's nothing wrong with learning how to protect yourself in case you get into a situation. And you also want to teach your kid at a younger age, just like you said, you rather be the one that's teach them about it versus them hanging out with some friends that don't know what they doing and you know sit, uh, no, a bad accident end up happening somebody get hurt so if you teach them at a young age the proper technique how to be safe with it and i guarantee you when they are amongst other kids that don't know what they're doing they will take the initiative and you know for for you know they can save a life just because you took the time out to properly train them no, you're absolutely right. It's extremely important. Um, you know, so we do uh, we do range days. You know, one of the other things that we that we have that we play with in my backyard here is um, I, I got a crossbow. I, oh, nice. Yeah. So <laughs> my son got a cross. I say my son, but it's, it's mine. Um, my son got a crossbow. <laughs> um, and we like to go out there and we'll get about, you know, 50 yards out and um We've we've got a a couple targets out there. I even got a little deer that we'll we'll put up and I go out there and do uh, practice some shooting. Um, whenever we can't get to the range, you know that's that's simple fun that we do. You know that's dad fun right there. You know what I mean? That, that's the type of fun that dad have. You know, dad's outside shooting arrows that could kill somebody. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. But ultimately, and my purpose of doing stuff like that is, you know, I, I'm into hunting, and you know, I, I fully believe that, you know, if if you are ever, and, and I'm also a little bit of a prepper to to some extent, you know, these are skills, these are life skills that that I believe that we should all be able to have. We should be able to go out there and hunt and get our own food. What if something happens and and, and you know we the power grid goes out, right? And all the food in your refrigerator goes bad, right? All the meat goes bad. Now what you, now now what are your options at that point? You know what I mean? Like how are you gonna feed yourself? Do you have the tools and the capability to go out there and find food for you and your family? No, which is you know which is extremely important because I feel like you know at some point you know I, I don't wanna say you know it's it's going to happen, but I feel like sooner or later it will happen where, you know, if you don't know how to survive, you're just going to put your family in the worst predicament. And we're not asking you to go out there and be like the top expert. Just know the basic, just the basic stuff, you know, because just knowing the basic stuff, you'll be ahead of probably, a, what, 60% of the population. Yeah, there's a there's a really good book that I have, um, SAS Survival Handbook. I highly suggest anybody um, that's interested in learning about just basic survival principles, how to tie knots, you know, what part of the meat is good, you know, um, pick up some uh, some books on wildflowers and just have that stuff around you so that way you know if if anything were to happen, you know, you have a book that can teach you what certain what certain uh, weeds or plants are that could be therapeutic or, or could be medicinal. Um, and just have that that information around because you never know. Pick it up every now and then and just read, you know, because you never know what you might need. You know, can you fish? If somebody gave you a, a hook and a line, can you go out there and fish without the whole pole? Yeah, and then, and um, that book is from what John John. Um, oh, John Lofty John, Wiseman. Yeah, so it's yes, SAS yep. Survival Handbook for, by uh, John Lofty Wiseman. You know, shout out yes, to him. I, yeah, I actually picked up that book too. Great, great resource. Uh, you know, it's it, it's one of those things that I go through every now and then. You know, just because we just never know, just never know. I know. And, and the king of prep over there. I mean, every time I talk to this guy about his generator, I could hear the excitement about this new generator that he's been <laughs> looking at. And, and that's another thing. If you got if you got a house or something like that, um, and you don't have a generator. There, there are options out there. We ain't gonna talk about that on this this podcast. Maybe that'll be a notary tech talk one day. But Mr. Griff, yeah. man, what 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 are your thoughts about um about 
just just being prepared yeah, and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. I mean, you find out what you need for the area that you're in and the area where you may have to go. So where you're at, you're like, okay, I'm here. I need this, but where I might have to go, I might need some other stuff. <clears throat> Case in point, in my area, a couple of years ago when they had that um, that huge hurricane coming, I was trying to figure out what water level we was at. They had all of these alphabets up there. And in my area, there was no alphabet. So they were showing all of these different areas that was going to flood based on these alphabets. But my area didn't have an alphabet. Come to find out my area is elevated just enough to where it wasn't going to flood. Ain't you lucky. And I was like, okay, cool. So then I said, wait a minute. I said, wait a minute, if I leave and I'm in an area that's not flooded, what's the possibility of somebody coming and ransacking my stuff because I'm on dry ground? And I was like, so now I got a decision to make. Do I stay and defend or do I leave and hope knowing I ain't going to be able to come back in? Right. So I was like, if I leave, I can't get back in. (laughs) So I said, you know what? I'm staying. So I, I ordered a generator. Now, see, that's one of the good things about having that 30 day Amazon account. Right, right. <laughs> I ordered me, I ordered me an eight hundred dollar generator, portable one, stuck it over here in my corner. I said, if for some reason I don't need it, I'm sending it back. And I did. <laughs> but one of the things that I also did was I got these these um dam bags that swell up when the water comes. Okay. So when the water comes, you can put them down in front of your garage door and all of that. And when the water hits them, they expand and it helps block the water. Oh, work. So, and that's one of the things that a lot of people don't think about. They also have long tubular ones that are like eight to 10 feet long. And then they even have some that you can put around your whole house, but that requires a pump and all of that. But the thing is, those are things that are available that you can have. So I said, okay, if I did leave, what do I need to have? We need sleeping bags, cots, tents, all that. So we have all of those kind of thing, shovels. I have a seven day cooler in the um, kitchen. So when you put ice in there, it'll last and keep things cold for at least seven days. If you keep it closed, of course, less if you have to go in and out, right. but those are, it's called a deep sea chest. So those are the kind of things that we have. And then I'm also looking at, you know, those MREs, meals ready to mm-hmm. eat, that kind of food. And since my wife doesn't eat meat, so I had to look for food that was vegan friendly. And they have it now. Yeah, man. You know what? Earlier you sent me this thing on uh, these vegan cheese steaks. Listen, I'm sorry. I, 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 they look oh, good. Oh, they were vegan? Yeah. I didn't realize they was vegan. No. <laughs> I just saw it said something cheese steaks. I didn't realize they were vegan. I wouldn't send it to no, you. See, here's the thing about <laughs> vegan food, man. Like... I'm cool with it. Like I was pescatarian for some time. I eat meat now, but I was pescatarian mm-hmm. for some time. So I'm I'm cool with the whole vegan thing. My my yeah. my issue is, if it's vegan, don't sit there and say it's a cheese steak. See, mentally, when I hear cheese and steak, I'm expecting cheese and steak together. Yeah. So call it something Makes else. Sense. Call 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 it mushrooms. Call it mushroom and cheese. Okay, don't call mm-hmm. it a, don't call it no cheese steak, because <laughs> I'm gonna be disappointed. Like mentally, I messed up. I messed up in the in the head about stuff like that too. Like stuff like blue cheese in my head, cheese ain't supposed to be blue, right? So, so I yeah. can't eat blue cheese because it mentally messes with me. Same thing with yeah. the sour cream. I associate cream with like the the Oreo cream, right? So whenever so right. somebody says sour cream, I'm like, yo, cream ain't supposed to be sour. I can't. That's disgusting. I got right? you. So they be killing me with that vegan stuff. It's vegan cheese steak. It's not steak. Like it's all, it, it's it's all a it's it's a mental thing. Look, I I tried I tried vegan a few years ago, and you know, I think I lasted maybe two years, and right. then now and then I went to you know where I was just only eating seafood. Now every now and then I'll eat meat, but the only meat I'll eat is goat. So it's like so it's <laughs> rare that I'll just sit here and just eat meat, but. I think it's definitely a mindset thing. And the fact that, um, Gr- Griff mentioned that they have that option now for those, um, meal bags. I think that's a, you know, mm-hmm. that's great. You know, I didn't think of that. So maybe that's something that, 
you know, I could probably look online to see if I can get some because my daughter, she's not a fan of meat. Like every once in a while, she'll have a piece of shrimp or something like that. But for her to eat meat, she's not a fan of it. Like she she never been a fan of it. And I feel like she's going to be one of those where, you know, she going to grow up. She don't really care about meat like that. Right, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, a lot of people are like, if you stop eating meat, you're not going to get protein. Well, there's actually more protein in vegetables yes, than are. there is in meat. You know, we're just accustomed to eating meat. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. <laughs> you know, so mm-hmm. um, we kind of got off on a tangent talking about survival, <laughs> which is nothing wrong with that. But um, yeah. let's get back. Let's get back to the conversation. You know, about decompressing from your business. You know, one of the things that I like to do uh, to decompress is like I, I Netflix, man. Like, I'll be watching things on Netflix, but, you know, one of the things that bothers me a little bit is, like, Netflix, like, the Netflix originals are great. Like, Netflix produces great original Netflix shows, right? But then it's like, I binge, man. I'm a binge watcher. So, it's like, after I'm done watching it, I'll be like, what else What what else is there? And, you know, and it's not like I watch a whole lot of TV because, like, if I'm not um out on a signing or something like that then i'm sitting here doing work for people for captivated so i always got i need some type of background noise you know music don't always do it so i'm always looking for something to watch um what about you guys um for me yeah i'm I'm looking at something on either hulu um amazon prime um, videos um netflix uh, sometimes A and E, and I have a TV that I'm looking at right here, and I don't ever turn it on. <laughs> I got a TV, but it's just easier for me to watch it online. I can throw my earbuds on and and watch it. You know, matter of fact, I just saw a really really good one, man, called um Justice Serve. It was from Africa. It was an African movie, and oh, yeah? man, that thing has some plots and twists in it that I did not see coming. So I'm like, man, and I'm not the I'm the guy that looks at the movie one time and I'm like, all right, yeah. I'm good. This one I might have to look at it two and three times because just the plot part behind it. Wait, what's it but, called? Um, Justice Serve. Justice Serve. All right, I'm yeah. gonna have to check that out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, is man, that, that on Netflix? Is, yeah, it's on Netflix. Man, that thing is nice. I I was just checking it out, and now they were speaking in Zulu and Swahili and stuff, so I had to do the you know, reading the um, closed captions, but they did talk a lot in English. But the last, I would say, 10, 15 minutes was really through me because I, I thought the guy was caught. I, I'll tell you, I thought it was over what he was trying to do. <laughs> I was like, I said, oh, well, it's just going to end like normal. And then I was like, oh, oh, snap. He had a real b- big plan. I'm like, I like that, you know. So, um, so yeah, I'll look at, you know, shows documentaries y'all know like the we were talking i know y'all would joke a bit about it looking at kung fu panda yo so <laughs> so we hit griff up right what, what were we trying to do with that Matthew? do you remember what, what were we trying to do we hit griff up and out of remember. nowhere griff was like hold on y'all i'm in the watch i'm in the middle of watching kung fu panda on netflix i was like what the heck? yeah that's exactly what he was doing was yep like i was looking at kung thing. fu panda Yep, and then I and then I had already looked at because I had just finished looking at the um the cartoon Jurassic Park series, so all four <laughs> all four seasons of that. So I'm looking at I don't looked at Jurassic Park. I was like, man, and I'm looking at all the different animal things, tiny animals, big animals, the animals at night, the animals in the evening. I mean, I watch it, but see, you know what? A lot of that stuff does give me inspiration for my business. Watching and just looking at how the animals work together and compete with each other to survive. And I'm sitting here seeing certain things. I'm like, man, you know, they find a way. But then, I mean, just like the animals, like the hippopotamuses and the gators, they're in those rivers and then the rivers dry up. But then just before all hope is lost, the rains come. Yeah. And it fills the river back up. Yeah. And those animals live that every single day, every year. And they know the dangers of it, but they find a way to survive. They find a way to make it happen and to look out for each other from, you know, from whenever they can. And then sometimes they know it's like, okay, well. We done told you, Fred, you ain't supposed to be down there by that piece of water. Okay, Earl the Gator done got you. 
<laughs> it, it's right. over. Well, I'm sorry for those who really know crocodiles. Earl the crocodile done got you. So for me, it's just and the reason why I do that because that helps me decompress. So then I can spend effective time with my family. So I use that to get that stuff out of my head. So like a lot of people are into the thing, and me and Matthew was doing it for a while, getting up at three in the morning. Oh, that messed too. me all up because yeah, <laughs> it didn't give me no time to decompress. Because I was always constantly like, okay, when I got to go to bed, got to go to bed, got to go to bed. No. I'm the type, I can be up till 2, 3 in the morning. So when people getting up at 3, I'm going to bed at 3. And for me, I'm being just as effective. Plus, I don't have anybody that I need to be dealing with at 7 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning. And my lifestyle in the house affords me the quiet time that I need. And it's in the evening. Plus, I have, you know, I got to keep an eye on my my dad. So I'm keeping, you know, tabs on him. And he doesn't get up sometime. He'll get up at like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning and want something to eat. You know, right. so. But all of that stuff, the Netflix, um, doing yard work, all that kind of stuff helps me disconnect from this here. You know, all the business stuff. And then I'm able to actually focus on the family like I need to. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, it's something that I have to uh, keep my mind on because it's really easy being a creative um, to get lost in your creations. And, you know, like I said earlier, you know, if I'm not on a signing, I'm, I'm generally doing work for somebody for Captivated. Um, and so it's like I have to remind myself at times to schedule. And, and this is what I do is I, I'll schedule blocks of time within my calendar you know, for my children. Um, so that way I make sure every day that I know that I'm at least giving them an hour of undivided attention of my time. Um, because time management, <clears throat> when you're running this business, it's kind of hard, especially if all you're doing is, is loan signing um, and you're not doing too much general notary work. Because at that point, you know, your time and availability is kind of dictated on the signings that are coming in. So it's like if if you're ripping and running constantly throughout the day and you've got younger ones, I know Griff, you've got you've got a family, but you don't have younger children, you know, your children can do for themselves. Um, right. You know, you, you have to remember to schedule that time for yourself and give them that time. So that's something that, you know, I am work. You know, it's a work in progress. I'm not going to say that I'm struggling. Um, I am going to say that it's, it's a work in progress, you know, and I need time away from work kids in time for me as well to decompress and usually for me you know i can tell that it's time for to 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 decompress when i don't want to look at my computer you know and that doesn't happen often because i stay in a creative space um i'm always thinking of something um to create i'm always thinking of just great ideas and tossing them out there a lot of times you'll see some of those ideas on t-shirts hint hint www.captivatingnotarystore.com. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of that creation, those, and, and those creation times come out um, and, you know, work that I do for customers and work that I do for myself and for, um, you know, my t-shirts. But I know it's time when I'm looking at my computer and I'm saying, I need to shut this down because I want to, you know, kick my monitors over. It, it's time to step away for a little bit. And so, you know, Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime, Hulu, uh, those are generally my go-tos. I like to go for walks, uh, do yard work myself. Um, you know, I, it, I actually like mowing the lawn just like I like shoveling snow. And I don't know if you guys feel <laughs> the same way about this, but being a family man and having people that, you know, constantly calling daddy, daddy, uh, you know, or Sebin or Ismail, you know, generally when I'm doing things like that, you know, mowing the lawn, shoveling snow nobody bothers me right none of the kids right. are running around when i'm mm -hmm. doing something like that because they know if they come out i'm gonna put them to work <laughs> so, so um you know doing those tests i get a lot of joy from because that's generally the time that i know nobody's gonna bother me no you're right and that's that's when i go out there and do it myself and a lot of times like some people gave me grief for me and my wife shoveling the snow like why you had your wife out there she cool with it that's yeah. her way of decompressing. You know, yeah. that's that's one of her ways to just like, hey, get my mind off of all of this stuff. And what people don't realize when you're running a business or multiple business or a business that does require a lot of your mental focus, 
you have to do something. So going out and shoveling snow is something that me and my wife don't have a problem doing. Now, my sons, yeah, they'll do it. You know, will they get up and just do it on their own? Not necessarily, but, you know, they'll do it. If I need them to help me cut the grass, they'll do it. But I have no problem going out and doing it myself. Just like, you know, the responsibility, okay, take the trash out. Sometimes just making sure you don't forget to do your fatherly, husbandly duties or wifely duties in your house sort of remind keeps you on the human side. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it keeps you on the human side of of all of this, you know. Um, but then you also gotta make you know, like now there's the other side is that a lot of people are spending more time trying to party it up and not doing enough into their business. So for some people, doing their business is a decompression for them partying it. You know, they're like, okay, I don't went to the club the last two nights. I guess I better go to my, I guess I better open up my business and make some money so I can go to club the next two nights. Right. <laughs> yeah, know? pretty much. And stuff. But I mean, it's a, it's just finding the right way to have your balance and and everything. And yeah, there's times, man, in a chair that I'm sitting in right now, which y'all can't see, or the one that y'all see me sitting in on YouTube, there are days, man, I'll be sitting here thinking of something and I'll just pass right out. <laughs> I'll just pass right out, wake up two, three in the morning, don't even know where I'm at. Yeah. And the wife done went to bed and just left me down here. Don't even put a blanket <laughs> on me sometimes. Nah, you know, I, I haven't like fallen that. asleep in this chair yet, but I got a, a, a couch in my office. That's my nap couch. You know, that's uh, the only time I sit down there is, is if I'm about to take a nap. And I, I already know it too. Like, as soon as I sit down on it, I'm like, yeah, let me get my charger and my phone, set the alarm, because if I sit here for five minutes, it's a wrap. Yeah, it is. It is. It's crazy. That's one thing I've I've come I've come to appreciate those midday naps, man. I never thought, oh. yo, man, look, I used to make fun of my older brother for taking naps. I'd be like, man, you're too big to be taking naps. Like, you just better leave that for the kids. And then as I <laughs> now, yo, I. I tend to appreciate a good nap every now and then. And I'm like, geez, that's what I've been missing. <laughs> Bro, when I hit like 33 or 34, those 15 minute naps started kicking in. And man, I'm talking about a full life recharge. Like I could recharge my entire life in 15 minutes. I mean, I got like, it's like a, a cell phone battery on, on, on steroids. You know, one of them ones I got the, the higher MHA, MAH on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That'll charge your, your phone in like 45 minutes, the whole thing. That's what them 15 minute naps be now, man. Like anytime I get an opportunity, I could be. I, so here's one of the things that I like to do. If I'm not talking to one of y'all, because usually we'll talk when one of us is like driving to an appointment or something like that. Yeah. I like to be extremely early to my appointments if I can. I'm talking like 20 minutes or so because I don't like to leave any opportunity for me to be late for no reason i prefer to be early sometimes i'll just sit there i'll get there early and you know i'll set my alarm you know five minutes before i gotta go in so i'll get a nice little 15 minute little little bit of shut eye and then once that alarm goes up goes off and you know i got five minutes to get in there then i go through my 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 breathing eye exercises and my visual visualization of how i want the appointment to go because i do prep I, i prep myself for these appointments Right. Not only do you, you prep to. the documents, I prep mm-hmm. myself so that way once I walk in there, I'm on. I'm, I, I know what my mission is. Right. So I take those five minutes and I prep and I walk up to the door and then boom, we out. Right. But those little naps, man. You right, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a nap person. Nap. <clears throat> I am not a nap person whatsoever because I'm the type. If I go to sleep, it's over. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be sleeping and then I'm gonna be up for the next twenty some hours. So if I can take a nap, it has to be thirty minutes, maybe an hour. But once I go over two once I go over an hour. Oh yeah. No, can't do that. Nah. <clears throat> That's a yeah. wrap. That's a wrap yeah. right there. And um and all that. So a lot of times I just push myself and I just keep going and everything, you know. So even though yeah. I'm fifty five, I'm not ready to retire or just kick back and chill. And I still got enough energy in myself to still do what I need to do for myself. Yep. And the main thing is, you know, a lot of people ask me about, Hey, why don't you get people to do this for you? It's not that I don't want to, you got to find somebody who's trustworthy and 
dependable to go out here and do what needs to be done. You know, and a lot of times one of the mistakes that I think business people make is that they get somebody to try to work with them who wants to be in the same industry as them. Mm-hmm. You need or in somebody the same who position is, as them. Huh? Or in the same position as them. Right. Yeah, that's so true. you want to get somebody who is not connected to what you're trying to do. They have a, a vision or goal that is not for our case being a notary. Right. You know, or, you know, I'm doing a training now. You don't want to get somebody in there to run your training program who also wants to do training because they're every step of the way, they're going to be thinking about themselves and visualizing themselves in your position. Yeah, if somebody's true. going to, I would have them work alongside me, but I wouldn't put them in a position to like, okay, you're going to work for me. That would be, that's, that's not what I would do. Yeah. You know, that's definitely something to consider mm-hmm. when you're looking at bringing somebody on. So Griff, how do you feel about this platform for us? I like it. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. It was perfect, man. I love it. I mean, I like this. Um, we got to keep it going. All right, Matthew. And how do you feel about this, uh, this new platform that we got here? Well, I feel like this is a great thing that we are doing. I like the fact that we were able to come together as a group and, you know, making sure that we are putting valuable information out there to the notary industry and not just the notary industry, just anyone that's uh, want to, you know, open their own business. And we are going to be consistent with this. And as always, we are going to do our research before we ever come on here and talk about anything. So we are doing a great thing, and I appreciate you guys coming on. Appreciate you guys, you know, us collaborating as a team to bring this out there to people. Absolutely, and me personally, Q, I love this 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 platform, man. Podcasting is extra cool. It's something I've been wanting to get into for a little bit. Um, I hope you guys like it too. Uh, feel free to check all of us out on YouTube. You've got Griff with Griffin Notary Services, Matthew with Matthew and Notary Services, and me and Q with the Captivated Notary. So on that, guys, we're going to get out of here. Hey, love your life, love your business, and love yourself. Take care, everybody. Peace. We soldiers, Griff, Matthew, and the Q, right, the podcast, peace. you can't hold us. Y'all heard the word, uh, y'all heard the word. Uh-huh. Griff, Matthew, and the Q, yeah, we on a verse. So diverse, with no rehearse, that's how we work. Authentic when we give it, if we said it, then we meant it. Uh-huh. Not to be confused yeah. with other people's views. Uh-huh. They get it how they get it, and we get it how we do. Yo. Look, homie, this a whole different game. We got a whole different name. We in a whole different lane. Yeah. We know the reason unsealed. This my everyday life. You know the reach unsealed. Every day I hustle out here living it right. We know the reach unsealed. Put the stamp down and step in front of the mic. Took the game over, we home now. We soldiers. Griff, Mather, and Q, the podcast, you can't hold us. We know the reach unsealed.